everybody. Welcome to another edition of How to Pass the Math FSA, the fourth grade edition. Today we will be focusing on the standard. It's maths.4.md.1.1. In other words, we are on lesson 20 today, which is relative sizes and converting units. So you can see I've placed our grade four FSA mathematics reference sheet that we will be, that we will be referring to. Without further ado, let me teach you. So example one, we have that Reed found a lizard that was eight centimeters long. What is the length of the lizard in milliliters? All right, so what we are doing is we are converting centimeters and millimeters. So we have eight centimeters. If one centimeter 1 cm equals how many millimeters? mm. Let's go over here. All right. So I see that over here, I see that one meter on my reference sheet equals 100 centimeters. And you might be asking, why am I going to meters? I need to be looking at centimeters and millimeters. Well, it doesn't tell me straight up on this reference sheet, so I need to use some common sense to be able to get this done, not common sense, but some math to be able to figure this out. All right, I also know that one meter equals 1,000 millimeters. So the same unit, one meter equals 100 centimeters, and one meter also equals 1,000 centimeters. So if you notice, 100 centimeters is gonna then be equal to 1,000 centimeters. So one centimeter is actually 10 times the amount for a millimeter. So using that, we're able to figure this out. One centimeter equals 10 millimeters. So eight centimeters, one times eight is eight. So 10 times eight would be 80 millimeters. That is our answer. I'm going to write out the word millimeters. Notice that all of my work went outside of the box and only my answer went inside of the box. Make sure you all do that. We are now on example two. The heights of three boxes are shown. Drag one measurement into each open box in order to, to order the heights from shortest to tallest. All right, so this is a graphic response item display, a grid item. Um, this is kind of how it would look on a computer screen because next year the fourth grade test will be on the computer. Um, this year it will be paper-based, but I think that you'll see something similar to this. So I tried to make it look like it would on a paper-based test. Excuse me. So we're not really going to drag, but we are going to write in the boxes, going from shortest to tallest. So I see three yards two feet and 27 inches. What I need to do is convert all of these to the same unit to make it so I can easily compare them. The way to do that is to find the smallest type of unit, which would be our inches. So I can convert feet to inches and I can convert yards to inches. So three yards, well, let's start with feet first because that's a little bit short smaller of a unit. So over here, I see that one foot, I'm going to write down here, one foot equals 12 inches. So two feet, not foot, two feet, one times two is two, so 12 times two would be 24 inches. So my two feet would be 24 inches. And I know that this is 27 inches. Okay, now over to yards. I see over here that one yard equals three feet. So one yard equals three feet. Let me start abbreviating just for room. But I have three yards. So three yards, one times three is three. So three times three would be nine feet. But I'm not finished because I'm trying to convert everything to, to inches. So 
Now I'm going to move this over. 9 feet equals how many inches? Well, we know that 1 foot equals 12 inches. So 1 times 9 equals 9. 12 times 9 would be 108 inches. So 3 yards would be 108 inches. And now all I have to do is order these from the smallest, sorry, the shortest to the tallest. So the shortest one would be 24 inches, but I'm not writing 24 inches. I need to write the unit that they gave me, two feet. Okay, next would be 27 inches. And our big guy over here would be three yards. Okay, example three, match each measurement in ounces with the correct measurement in pounds. So I see 48 ounces, 16 ounces, 64 ounces, I need to match those with one pound, four pounds, and three pounds. So let me use my conversion sheet right here. I see that one pound equals, I'm gonna write this over here, one pound equals 16 ounces. Okay, so, or, yeah. So one pound equals 16 ounces. I can go ahead and do this one. Now let me see, I'm going to start from the top. Let me see how many four pounds is. If one pound equals 16 ounces, then four pounds, here I'm multiplying by four, so I need to multiply 16 times four, which I need to do over here. Six that looks like plus, 16 times four. 6 times 4 is 24 in the clouds, 1 times 4 is 4, plus 2 is 6, so 64 equals 64 ounces. So 4, four pounds is 64 ounces, this is where they meet. And finally, 3 pounds. Alright, so if 1 pound equals 16 ounces, and I'm doing 3 of those, I need to multiply 16 times three. Six times three is 18. Woo, it's high up here in the clouds. Nice landing, dude. One times, sorry, three times one is three, plus one is four, so 48. There we go. Selena uses eight liters of water to make lemonade. That sounds good right now, some lemonade. What is the capacity of water in milliliters. Let's talk about this word capacity. That's the amount of liquid or you know a substance that a container could hold. So what is the capacity of water, the amount of water in milliliters? So I'm converting liters to milliliters. Let's use our reference sheet. Liters, so one liter equals 1,000, I'm going to put ml for milliliters. We have 8 liters. So since we're multiplying by 8 here, we need to multiply by 8 here. That would be 8,000 milliliters, which is A. Example five, select all the measurements that are about one inch long. So I'm gonna give you, oops. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little hint, an inch is about, and this is actually one of the answers, it's about the size of the tip of your thumb to that first knuckle. That's about the size of an inch. So when you're thinking about relative sizes, knowing about, or about this much, okay? So the length of a notebook, a notebook is like this long. So that's way too long, that's almost like a foot. B, the length of the tip of your thumb to the first knuckle. See? Yes. The width of a dollar bill. Okay, well, if you're thinking about a dollar bill, 
you're either going about this big or about that big. So that's too long. The length of a quarter, yeah, if you were going across a quarter, that would be about the size of an inch. The height of a cereal box, uh, no, that would be too big, so B and D. Last one, example six, and this one's going to be a doozy. The table shows the time it takes to complete two tasks in hours. Complete the table to show the minutes and seconds it takes to complete the two tasks. So this is a table item where you're actually recording data within the table. So I see over here that task one takes three hours to complete. Task two takes five hours to complete. We need to convert these hours to minutes and then to seconds. So let me find our minutes or our hours. One hour, let's do our hours first. One hour equals 60 minutes. Okay, so if we have three hours, that's multiplying by three, so 60 times three would be six times three is 18 and then add a zero. That would be 180 minutes. Okay, and then let's do five hours. Five hours equals, so if we're multiplying one times five, the lighting is not very good right now. Sorry guys, um, my face is a little dark. Um, five hours, so six times five would be 30, add our zero to the end, that would be 300 minutes. I didn't mean to record all that. All right, I'm gonna continue now. All right, so now we're looking to change to convert our minutes into our seconds. So I'm gonna get the red marker. And if we look at our reference sheet, we see that one minute equals 60 seconds. One minute equals 60 seconds. So 180 minutes, now this is where we're taking it up a notch. Multiplying one times 180, so 60 times 180 would be a lot like 18 times six. And I'll add my zeros on in just a second. So eight times six is 48. Ooh, it's high up here in the clouds. Nice landing, dude. Six times one is six, plus four is 108. Now, I have a zero here that I'm multiplying and a zero here, so I'm gonna add on two zeros, ones, tens, hundreds, comma. So 10,800. And now let's do the other one. We're doing 300 minutes. So here we've multiplied by 300. One times 300 is 300. So 60 times 300 would be three times six, which is 18. And then we had 360, so I'm adding on one, two, three zeros at the end, be 18,000. All right, that's a wrap on relative sizes and converting measurements. Again, if you need some more practice with the same types of problems we just did, click that descript the link in the description box below. It has tons, hundreds of problems to help you rock this test. Now before I leave, let me leave you with a motivational message today. It says pulling someone down will never help you reach the top. Um, so we've got a big bullying issue in schools today, okay? And it goes kind of unnoticed and kids are afraid to speak up. But if you are somebody who is trying to drag somebody down to make you look good, you don't, you don't. You're a bully, okay? Straight up. So don't 
pull somebody down. Stop today. Just stop and apologize and move on with your life being kind. Okay, that's how we, if you bring somebody down, you're, it, doesn't, it doesn't raise you up. You're never going to become anything if you continue to pull people down. You won't become anything but a bully, and that's not somebody that you want to be. So, um, kids, if you see anybody or you know that you are being bullied or you see somebody being bullied, you need to tell an adult, okay? And tell a teacher that you can trust, that you know is going to do something about it. That's vital. We are here to help you, okay? Um, you're awesome. I love you guys, and I will catch you in the next episode.